So with us today, Mike Cohen, who we are very are proud and lucky to have with us today. Mike is a super talented data engineer at Substack. Now, for those of you who don't know Substack, first you should. So Substack is an amazing, if not the most amazing uh, content publishing platform out there. Essentially, it allows people like you and me uh, to become journalists or you know to start our own newsletters and, and charge subscriptions for them. And Substack has been growing in February. They reported already that they have 500,000 paying subscribers. Uh, that's old news. Uh, yeah, and that's probably old news by now. And like every, every month you try to follow up and see that the number grows like crazy. They've been getting a lot of media attention. Um, and that we should, I think, consider, you know, stop dump this podcast and move to just, you know, use that on Substack or something. It seems like <laughs> that's the place to be right now. You could do it on being an entrepreneur. You could do it on data, whatever. Think about it. Now, Mike has been working in the data space for quite some time prior to uh, Substack, which we'll hear all about. You know, he spent time also at uh, companies like Pax and Venmo uh, and a variety of other exciting places. Mike, anything I missed about Substack or you in particular? Uh, no, excellent intro. Better than I could done myself. <laughs> okay, so let, so let's get warmed up uh, and, and tell us for starters at Substack, how much data in terms of data volumes do you guys deal with? Yeah, I think we're in the, you know, I always, uh, I don't know what big data means when people say big, but I, I think we're sort of in like the medium, small to medium data camp still. We're in the, you know, terabytes, uh, tens of terabytes, not in the pentabytes or anything like that quite yet. But um, the data volumes are growing quickly as more and more people come on. We have a lot of events data that we're logging. And um, yeah, that's where we're at today. I think the the rule of thumb for if you're on big data is that everybody starts with apologizing that they they have data, but it could be bigger. <laughs> Every time, yeah, yeah we, we only have hundreds of terabytes, we're not petabyte scale yet. Or we're only yeah. a few terabytes, not a gazillion of terabytes yet. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that uh, I think that uh, is well considered uh, big data. And how many people? Uh, what's the headcount at Substack these days? We just surpassed forty um, recently. In the last couple of weeks, we broke through the the forty mark. Um, we're on a, a mm -hmm. big hiring spree. Um, uh, come check out our jobs page. A little plug. Uh, and maybe we uh, can uh, copy some nice job definitions. Yeah. Do you have? Yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. Def definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're trying to um, scale up the team. We, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'd love to be somewhere in the seventies by the end of the year. And how many people deal with data? Uh, we are a very small team in a already small company. We're a two-person team at the moment. Um, so it was just me uh, for the first. Uh, you know, 15 months or so. And then I recently brought on someone. Um, so we have two of us now uh, since since March. How is sort of that fast growth? Uh, how does it feel from, you know... To double head count from one to two so fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in That's terms of subscribers and visitors, I mean, you've seen, you've been there like a little bit over a year, right? During that period, traffic, subscribers has gone up dramatically. How does that look like from the data engineer's perspective? Uh, it's been, I mean, exhilarating. It's been it's been super fun to watch and and um, sort of like the the problems to tackle have have kind of uh, have kind of grown with 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 the with the growth of the company in general. And it's been um, yeah, I don't know, exhilarating is the way I best describe it. Just constantly thinking about how do we do this thing that we were doing, you know, a week ago. Now we have to do it at a, a much bigger rate and a much bigger pace. And how do we um, design our systems for, you know, a couple of weeks and months from now and stuff like that. So it's been super fun. So let's talk about, you know, your, your, your data world. Tell us uh, what does it look like and what kind of things do you do with it? Our data today is um, we, we have, well, we have a uh, sort of a, a Postgres production database, and then we have what's called, we call our like events pipeline, which is effectively a Kinesis stream of data um, that gets uh, processed and parsed into S3 and subsequently then um, dumped into Snowflake. Um, separately, we also have a process that um, will mirror our data from production into that same um, Snowflake um, data warehouse at the moment. And other sort of data sources are getting piped in there too. And so everything kind of ultimately lands there. And then um, from there, we do um, 
We have a, you know, our BI sort of tooling is, is set up on top of that. Um, and, uh, and from there, we also do like sort of transformations internal to, to Snowflake. And then we'll do sort of the, we pipe that back out to places. I think, uh, the phrase I've seen around a lot of these days are more and more is reverse ETL. And we sort of do that. Um, but we send our, our sort of derived or transformed data back out to sort of a, basically a separate Postgres database where we can have um, such that the data can be accessed in the product uh, with, with indexes and be super fast and all that jazz. So that's sort of our high level structure today. So you're using kind of the data warehouse to simplify, compress, disaggregate, like really and get it back then to Postgres to support customers. Yes, exactly. What about BI, by the way? Which BI tools are you using there? Yeah, we use um, Periscope data um, acquired by a company called SciSense. Um, you may be familiar with, I don't know. <laughs> yes, we are. 15 years. <laughs> yeah, El Dad yeah, so followed SciSense, but uh, he has a short memory too, so you know he might have already forgotten about it. Absolutely yeah. not. But I'm here to remind yeah. him I have a longer memory span. Um, <laughs> so uh, how much... Of the data stack, you know, nowadays at Substack, is do you know, do you consider legacy versus modern? Like, how much have you gotten when you joined? How much has it changed still uh, since? Uh, or is it sort of something that's already built uh, to scale into the future? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, a lot has changed since when I joined. Um, when I first joined, um, we had very little in terms of BI tooling or sort of uh, any like data warehousing. So, um, you know, all of that has sort of happened in the last, you know, 12 to 15 months. Um, and, and that's gotten us to where we are today. And sort of the next, I think as, as a company where we're at today is thinking about how do we start to, you know, kind of really put the data to work now that it's very, much, much, much easier to work with and accessible. And um, we have the systems in place to put it back into the product or to do um, BI and analytics. And then I think then sort of after that, there'll be the next chapter of, uh, well, what then what do we do next? How do we keep it, you know, how do we build towards more real time? How do we build towards faster insights? And, um, you know, unfortunately, as a small team, we're sort of, we have to take things in little chapters is how I kind of think of it. And then that's the, so I think we're on chapter two. Um, and then chapter three will be sort of like, how do we, how do we ramp this up even faster and do, do even more? And for the audiences sort of, you know, uh, working on uh, with the BI tools with Periscope, is it a specific departments? Is it cross-departmental who's driving the requirements for, for BI? It's a mixture of, of sort of data explorator data exploration work, which, you know, will be sort of either product or even data team driven. And then um, we also have um, sort of, you know, other internal teams, whether it's our support team or what we call our partnerships team. Um, and they have, you know, data questions and sort of as a data team, we will help them answer those questions by giving them, you know, reports and whatnot that they can uh, monitor in, in, in Periscope. So how much of a bottleneck do you end up becoming? Sounds like you have a lot of supporting to do out there. Yeah. Um, that's why they doubled. That's why yeah. they doubled, yeah. <laughs> and then that's one of the reasons for doubling and why we're uh, you know seeking to uh, double again, hopefully this year, um, and get to, I'd love to end the year around four people on the team. Um, and so, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely a factor. And, I would say only only somewhat recently did our sort of team chemistry. We we used to be more technical users than non technical users. In other words, more SQL users than non SQL users. And only very recently, in our sort of our growth has started to has, has sort of shifted that equation, where now we have sort of more non technical non SQL users, and um, and so that bottleneck has has started to become more uh, apparent than it once was. I would say. What's the what does your morning routine look like? Which tool do you open, or sort of not opening the most every day to see to check check in on things? That's a good question. Uh, um, let's see, uh, Slack. <laughs> Make sure there's nothing uh, okay. in, in the data channel that someone has reported or asked about. Um, and then I, I go. I have about six 
Periscope dashboards um, that I look at sort of in order uh, every single day that are basically pinned uh, in one of my Chrome browsers. And I go through those. Um, they're sort of high level company stuff, um, support uh, Q2. Right now we're in Q2, the Q2 goals. Um, and then I have a spam publication detection <laughs> dashboard where I look for any uh, bad actors and uh, try to handle that too. Bad actors. <laughs> How, by the way, that's an interesting use case. How do you find the bad actors and the, the spam publications? <laughs> I can't, that'll give away my fraud rules and everyone will know how to beat them. <laughs> good point. Good point. Uh, I was just testing you, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do uh, what we call a, a, a lightning round. Okay. Of small blitz questions. So don't overthink. Give us your, you know, shoot straight. Let's see what you come up with. Are you ready? Yes. C commercial or open source? Commercial. Batch or streaming? Streaming. Write your own SQL or use a drag and drop viz tool? Write my own. <laughs> Work from home or from the office? <laughs> uh, that one is hard. Uh, <laughs> Both you can have you can have both. Yeah, I think I want three days at home, two days in the office. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. the hybrid exactly. model rules now, so you know it's a legit to say both. Yeah. Uh, AWS, GCP, or Azure. Uh, AWS. You to pick one here, so you can't pick one. Okay. To DBT or not to DBT? Um, controversial, not to DBT. Cool. To Delta Lake wow. or not to Delta Lake? Um, not to Delta Lake. Uh, not to DBT. I think is the first time we had someone to yes. say no. This is the first time. Let's talk about that a little bit. Probably know, a mistake. You're probably mistaken. You probably got that answer wrong. All, all, all your listeners just turn. All your listeners just turn this episode off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it in the trailer. So, so yeah, do elaborate on that a little bit. So, what's your take on DBT and, and why not? Which is uh, <laughs> no, it's, a big it's, no. It was a big no. That's why <laughs> it's not. It's not. I don't have that strong of a no opinion, but I just haven't. Um, I haven't used it myself in the sense of the, I, I, I've used it, but I, I have another sort of system that we that I kind of put together that does similar behavior um, and I, I think allows like a little bit more uh, control. And ultimately, you know, with DBT, my understanding at least is you still have to have something that schedules and orchestrates the jobs. And so I've just kind of created a system that um, does a lot of that. I don't want to say it's anywhere near as sort of comprehensive as DBT, but does a lot of that. And it's all just based in Airflow. So Python based. How much, uh, you know, you, you said you guys are on Snowflake. How much processing do you guys do ELT? Um, exclusively in Snowflake? Do you do a lot of processing also outside of Snowflake prior to ingesting into Snowflake? Uh, no, almost, no, 100% of the processing is happening in Snowflake. Have you ever considered using Spark to do that or just started clean sheet, just use Snowflake? Uh, no need yeah. to migrate anything. That that was sort of my thought. Yeah, it was clean sheet, start from scratch um, and We'll see when we need to, you know, go kind of bigger than, you know, quote unquote, bigger than Snowflake can handle. I'm sure they don't want to hear that, but there's, I'm sure there's a point where, you know, using something like Spark in a more distributed fashion where you can have a lot more control might make a lot of sense, but we're not there yet, at least. So if, you know, looking at your pie chart of time spent on which topics, like how much time do you spend supporting the BI users and the BI tools versus supporting the warehouse versus supporting the, the pipeline uh, and so forth? Yeah, not to cop out on the question, but I, I, I'm pretty evenly split, I would say, at the moment. Um, and there's like another chunk, which is sort of administrative. So, you know, trying to work on hiring and and and, and building the team out so that I can kind of do be, be more places um, all the time, yeah. But so basically, know. like most high growth startups, you seventy percent of your time goes on hiring, and then the thirty percent that's left goes on 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 real stuff, which is great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say I'm, <laughs> I'm maybe like 
35% hiring. Yeah. 35% uh, support of different people or functions and meetings and whatnot. And then the remaining 30% is, is, is split evenly uh, uh, between sort of either data engineering work or just my own data analytics work. Always hiring is also always a good excuse because, you know, if people, if you, you know, you tell people, I, I'm sorry, you know, it will be fixed the moment we hire another person. So I'm actively hiring. <laughs> so it's, it's not your fault, essentially. Um, okay, now... <laughs> Buzz so, loves hiring. He discovered hiring a few months yeah, ago. You know, and that always, you know, comes complaining, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And I tell him, I'm hiring for it. Uh, <laughs> happy. Um, okay, so tell us about uh, an awesome win uh, at Substack. I, I would say, I, I sort of, you know, maybe glossed over it before, but... Um, the tools that we have in place now to do, we're not in the sort of, I mentioned sort of before we want to get to a place where it's more real time analytics and more real time insights in the product. But right now it's, we're living in a batch world where our sort of definition of real time is really every 20 minutes, we're kind of updating data in place. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty proud of the system that we have and that's, that's doing that. We're running a bunch of interesting complex queries uh, that create, you know, meaningful tables that are, um, you know, denormalized and great for analytics, but also great for serving up things in the product. Um, and then the, the way we're piping that back to, to Postgres with indexes in a way that is uh, efficient and, um, you know, scalable is, is, is pretty neat. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that system that we have in place. Connecting data back to the product and have and feeding the product experience with data is, is huge, huge, huge. And you're right. It is super satisfying to get there. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, someday my, my, my pipe dream is to be able to, you know, when you send a newsletter a lot, some people, not, not all, but are want to just refresh, 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 refresh and watch the numbers tick. Uh, and we're not there yet. Um, and I will, I want to get there and that, that will be, Sort of, an, an, I mean, there'll be other exciting things between now and then, but that will be a really exciting day for me. Now, enough with the, you know, with the self gratification and then the win stories. Tell us about yeah. an epic failure. <laughs> okay, that's a bigger list. Um, Everything that happened before we managed to get data back to the product. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, if it's uh, there, I, I, I guess I should say, like, thankfully, there haven't been you know, catastrophic, um, errors that have, uh, that we can attribute to, to, to sort of the data team, but there have been things we've done poorly, like, uh, not, you know, we, we were, <laughs> we were writing data too aggressively to this Postgres thing I keep talking about. And we were, we ended up, uh, filling up the wall, uh, the write ahead log and knocking over the database and, uh, it, you know, so all queries started to time out and um, then the site went down. And so we've had a number of sort of um, <laughs> learning experiences uh, uh, about how to do things uh, that, yeah, that keep the site running and how to sort of do fit test things a little bit better and uh, monitoring and um, putting metrics on, on, you know, using some of our, 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 our metrics and monitoring tools like Honeycomb um, to, to have a sense when things might go be going wrong and try to prevent that from from happening in the first place. So yeah, there's been a lot of uh, s small disasters, no nothing too catastrophic yet. Yet, and then I, the key word is yet because I'm sure that it's coming. What's the top challenge for you know for the data engineering team now uh, or the data team in general at Substack? So one of the things that I <clears throat> personally have an aversion to is. Um, well, I, or I, I prefer to keep the surface areas small. So um, in many organizations, you know, there might be a data warehouse or something like that. And then data is sort of sent back out to a lot of different other services. Um, and uh, I'm trying to right now, you know, at least for as long as possible, I can shape the decisions, not send it out to too many places because um, my fear is that ends up leading to a situation where you have, you know, one person looking at something uh, in Google Sheets or in Excel or, uh, you know, in an Airtable or something like that and saying, oh, I see this number here, but over in the BI tool, the number is different. 
Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of ways to try to like control for that. But one way I think to control for that is to try to, um, you know, centralize and keep things kind of in one location. And so, um, a thing I'm thinking about a lot recently is how do we make our data and our analytics more self-service and more self-service for, um, for not, not necessarily technical users. And so how do we, you know, whether it's building canonical data sets that are easy to query and we kind of give everyone a little SQL lesson or we build, or we get some sort of tooling that, um, you know, doesn't require SQL knowledge at all. Um, how do we, I guess maybe a way to put it, how do we democratize the data access a bit more? Um, so I think about that a lot and that's kind of, I guess, maybe more on the analytics side than mm -hmm. on the engineering side, but I think that they're very, uh, they're two sides of the same coin, really. How much of your responsibilities on the analytics side as well? Um, all of Building it. out company dashboards and stuff like that. All of it? Wow. Wow. Um, what gets on your nerves the most in your daily work with data? Reconciling data from different uh, different data sources. So for example, um, yesterday I spent a long time trying to reconcile data that we're seeing um, from a test that we're running in Optimizely with our own um, data events uh, logging. And yeah, it's hard. It's, it's an example of what I was talking about just a moment ago where, you know, in a, a little bit Optimizely is a bit of a black box. And it's so to sort of reconstruct it is a bit of a, you want to be able to put trust in the tool, um, but to do so, sometimes you want you verify it yourself, and sometimes in verifying it yourself, you end up in a rabbit hole. <laughs> and so, yeah, that 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 can be kind of frustrating, uh, but it's important. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, some yeah, it's important. And it's frustrating. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so we're close to reaching the end. We want to maybe get your advice uh, on which companies or leaders or people to follow that inspire you or that you find interesting on online. I, I definitely am interested. Uh, I, I don't know. I follow a lot of... Uh, I, I'm on this data engineering... Uh, uh, what's it called? I have it up here. Data Engineering, we data engineering Weekly um, is a cool uh, newsletter. Uh, mm -hmm. Substack newsletter. Uh, Tristan Handy has a great newsletter, not Substack based, but mm -hmm. still a good newsletter. Um, <laughs> and I'm interested in what you guys are doing at Firebolt. I think um, the uh, I love Snowflake, but one of the things that I, you know, the, the reason we're sending data back out to Postgres is because uh, we don't have, you lose the, the ability to kind of index or to have, um, you know, functional uh, aggregations that are that are very snappy. And so I think getting the, uh, you know, the data warehousing or the uh, the OLAP databases to look more like uh, databases with an index is going to be very, very interesting and compelling in the near future. And um, so that's very interesting to me. Um, what else? Yeah, those are those are sort of like the general sphere of things that I'm mostly interested in at the moment. Thank you so much. I think... Uh... <laughs> This is it, El Tad. What do you think? Any? I think his point, his interests are really, really kind of <laughs> spot <laughs> on. Spot imagine, on. imagine Mike is is not here with us. And, and what would you tell me about him behind his back? <laughs> so I think the stack is 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 perfect, and and frustration is is hard, but it's a daily frustration we're only with. And uh, there's, I think, I think really, I think I, I wish you all the best. I wish you can scale fast. I wish you can hire a team that you love and, and, and can work with and, and accomplish meaningful things together. Always, always great to, to see you. And congrats on being a part of the success of Substack. So let's keep in touch and thank you everybody for hopping on this episode of the Data Drink Show. See you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.